So we're here. We're here, Mike. We're here at the 100 years of WBA convention. Wow. What a great event they have going on here. Absolutely. I mean, this is great just to see all these great fighters uh, all together in one place. Yeah. So, so we interviewed Corey Spinks. What do you have to say? Uh, you know, Corey reminisced a little bit, you know, because we've known Corey for many, many years, uh, you know, being in the Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, we talked about fight time promotions all those years ago, back with Howard Davis Jr., the late yeah. Howard Davis Jr. Talked about his ping pong days back at Gold's Gym when that was in existence back in the day with all those great fighters he trained back then. We talked a little bit about his father, you yeah. know, and I uh, gave my condolences because I hadn't seen uh, Corey since Leon had passed. Yeah. And and this is this is this is a hundred years in existence. Like, wow! Uh, and every you know major uh, event you know is the WBA is is involved. Um, who who else did we uh, interview? Well, I'll tell you this. You know, from what I, I learned actually today is that in a hundred years they've been doing this. This is the first time they've ever had it in the United States. Wow! It's always been elsewhere. So not only do we get it to have it in the United States, but it's in our backyard here, only a couple hours away from home for us in Orlando. Yeah and the centennial on top of everything else. So we have a lot more activity here, a lot more people in attendance, especially the American fighters, of course, because they're not traveling as far. Yeah. Uh, we got the opportunity to, uh, to interview Jesse Vargas oh, and Popo Freitas. Uh, who else did we grab out there? Um, I, I saw Paulie here before the uh, convention's over. I'm going to grab him. Yep, there's a lot of a few more fighters out there we'd like to talk to. We talked to Mar Marcos Escudero, who's got a fight coming up as well. He's got big things planned. Um, he's moving up in the rankings as well. Don King was here hanging out to, as well. Uh, he moves pretty fast for an old man because we couldn't catch him on the way out, could we? <laughs> yeah, and we also uh, interviewed Laura Chang uh, from uh, MNR Boxing. Uh, shout out to MNR Boxing, uh, one of the local uh, Miami uh, promoters. They run great fights over there. Uh, make sure you check them out and follow them. Um, but you know, this this is this. Uh, I'm really impressed with this uh, organization here. Um, everyone's met us with smiles and and you know, very excited to have us here. Um, and guess where we're at? When I say here, we are at. The Carib Royale Orlando. Um, this hotel is great. They've always been really nice to us as well. Um, shout out to uh, Box Lab Promotions. Uh, the fights last night, wow. Tell me about that. How would you like those fights last night? Well, you know, I kind of came a little bit late. <laughs> I had some things to take care of. But from what I did see those last few fights, uh, they, you know, they were action-packed. Uh, there was quite some things to see. Sergio Martinez actually fought on the card. And I was surprised to even see that he'd be on the card at all. Uh, you know, being as big and, and, and as famous as he is, um, to be put on that card, I'm um, just kind of thrown in there. Uh, but, you know, I think he moved his record to something like 53 and 3 and 2 or something like that. Or yeah. could even be 60 by the time. But, um, yeah, Sergio Martinez, a, you know, a fantastic former lineal champion. want to try to catch him also sometime and try to do an interview with him as well. Yeah, and, and um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, mid-meeting, mid uh, Jake Paul came in. Um, you know, and you know, it, it's, it's sort of like, um, uh, when you see a Michael Jordan, it, it, he's, he, people gravitate to him and they want to, you know, he, he did, you see, did you see everyone get out of their seats and, and, it, and basically run up to him? Yeah. Um, that's pretty amazing that, that, you know, he can draw, you know, the whole, the whole, the shake the room, you know? And it's more interesting because he's not really a boxer, you know, and the fact that they've got people that, that, are, that like you said, gravitate towards him. And I guess you know, it's more about because he's kind of the in thing right now. Um, you know, we love to see him actually get in the ring and fight a boxer and uh, prove that he's got the skills to kind of be hanging around guys like this because such great fighters here today. Um, and, you know, it's too bad a little bit that he overshadows them. But, uh, again, he's, he's the in right now. A lot of these fighters are kind of lost and forgotten. Um, but it's going to be our job to make sure people do remember those guys as well. Yeah, well, I mean, my son watches his TV shows and everything. And when I say, hey, come sit down, you know, he watches his NFL and stuff. We watch games together all the time. When I say, hey, come sit down and watch his boxing event, at the end of the day, uh, the boxing, when Jake Paul fights, Logan Paul fights, that's what my son wants to see. And, you know, that is great. And, and I applaud, you know, like Jake and Logan Paul. They're, they're, they're like the pioneers of boxing for the younger generation um, today. And, and Jake was here today, um, and he uh, spoke about 
uh, unionizing, you know, uh, fighters union, and 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 uh, he he did uh, like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and and you know, the words coming out of his mouth, it, it, it feels like he really wants to help the fighters. You know, yeah. no, he wants to be a part of this world for sure. Um, you know, he's he's kind of inserted himself into this world, and that's that's great. Like you said, especially trying to bring that younger crowd. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the, the UFC generation fighters kind of gravitate a little bit towards boxing just because of guys like Jake Paul, um, guys like that. And, uh, you know, the, 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 it's a good thing and a bad thing. And I see the pros and cons in it. You know, the only negative that I see with it really is that, you know, they put on a show, but it's not truly with a lot of, you know, big boxers, big name boxers. So when these guys watch those kinds of fights and they see what he brings to the table, they're not truly watching like boxing at its best. And uh, it's a good thing that he's, though he's had some good shows and good events and he's brought the attraction and he hasn't like flaked out because, you know, if he had a bad performance, people might just disappear. It's like, uh, it's like watching uh, Pacquiao and Mayweather all over again. Yeah. You know, all the people that didn't have, you know, a boxing IQ or didn't know about the sport came over to watch a fight like that because of two big names and what they got, unfortunately, wasn't a great event. And now they kind of faded away and said, you know, I'm not interested in boxing any longer. Um, hopefully Jake doesn't do that. Hopefully he brings people, gravitates them towards real boxing. I know he's got a promotion himself, and now he's signing fighters like Amanda Serrano, a real true champion of boxing. And uh, as long as he continues to have people like that on his card to, to fill it with real boxers, it's great. But he himself would be great to see him fight like a Tommy Fury or somebody kind of, you know, maybe on their way up and eventually get into contender status to fight a contender. And then who knows, you know, maybe a former well, champion. You know, Anderson Silva fought his whole life. You know, so so to negate that he beat Anderson Silva to a pulp, <laughs> yes, Anderson Silva is a little old, but you know, I, w I was I was impressed. Yeah. You weren't. I didn't see that fight. I still oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I, you know, I well, haven't seen it, but you know, like I said, I have my reasons why. But um, but you know, as far as him fighting Anderson, so that's great. You know, he, he fights guys like that. I don't know how you know the fight is scripted if it's scripted, how they're going about, you know, what they're going about. Um, you know, when people sign on a fight at Jake well, Paul. Well, it's a pro fight, so it's, right, not, right. it's not scripted. But Anderson Silva's record was 0-0 before he got in the ring, so he doesn't care about a loss if he had to take one. But you try to fight a guy who's a contender who may be undefeated, he's not going to want to step in there and just take a fall. And well, he's, 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 only six, he's only six fights into the boxing no, 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 world, so... I'm, I'm not saying that's what's happening with his opponents. I'm just saying there's a possibility. And there's rumors that float around that state that that's what it is, right? So we need to see him truly fight a real, you know, real fighter that has something to lose um, to be able to see, you know... It's coming. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it will be also. We're just we're waiting for it. But I think he's also doing it the right way. Just the same way that boxers start to bring their, you know, build their career up. They build those first 20 to 25 uh, fights, and they, they, they basically fight guys with, you know, upside down records, guys over the hill, guys that, wait, you know, wait, have sure. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Didn't he fight Mayweather? No, he didn't fight Mayweather. Who fought Mayweather? It was Logan. His brother fought Mayweather? Correct. Okay, is that a real fighter? He fought a real fighter in an exhibition match. Okay, so... <laughs> with the rule that they okay so uh, so so his brother did, his brother fought yeah. um so so w what did you think of that fight well it was an exhibition match we all knew that it was going to be a draw um no matter what happened because they stated that beforehand a lot of the fans didn't hear that ahead of time but that was the rule um and it was great it was action it was you know people able to see what who they wanted to see you know people are fans of of youtube and and logan paul and people are fans of boxing and mayweather and they got to see two guys kind of so it's kind of like a celebrity boxing match I guess I would probably call it similar to something like that. Um, but now Jake Paul's truly fighting real professional fights. They're not exhibition matches. He just needs to put somebody in front of him that's a real fighter. Okay, great. So who, 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 who? Who would you be impressed by that if he be beat? Well, I, I guess like you said, you know, he's only six fights in, right? He's got to build it up. He hasn't had all this time where he's done all these things like other fighters have. So I think it's great if he finally gets Tommy Fury in the ring, starts there. And then kind of moves into, you know, fighting a contender, fighting someone with a great record, somebody who's got something to lose. Can he beat Tommy Fury? Um, based on what I've seen, no. I don't think that he can. But how, how is it going to be written? Okay. So, no written. This is a professional fight. So, if he beats uh, Fury, do you think, does it more legitimize himself? Yeah, it starts to become more legitimized as he starts to build up. But as I said, I was, I was stating before you, you mentioned that, 
these guys do have to fight other guys that start to build that career. You know, we all know guys do that. They fight these guys with upside on records so they can build it to that 20-0. and 0. So those first few guys that they're fighting are not true com competition for them usually. So I get it. Jake Paul's got to build his career as well, especially because he got a late start to it. So let him have his fun, you know, for the first 15-plus fights before he gets in there with, like, a real true grit boxer. But then we'll see what happens at that point. Like, he's making his money. He's got to fight it fight by fight. We were there. You were, I believe, with me uh, when Vitor Belfort beat Evander Holyfield, yeah, right? Yeah. And then uh, they came up there from, uh, was it Triller? And the guys offered uh, Jake Paul $30 million to fight Vitor Belfort. Yeah. Winner take all. Not just, you know, it was, you have to win. Right. Take the money, otherwise you get nothing. And um, we have, we've heard crickets from Jake Paul's side of things. That's because Vitor Belfort really wants to fight this guy and really win and put himself back on a platform and a stage. And you, and you, think, you think Vitor Belfort would beat his ass? Well, what I'm saying is that Vitor Belfort himself is also not a boxer, but he's had a lot of striking in his career, and he's had a lot of, you know, he's had some boxing matches, just hasn't been at that high level. Um, but somebody like that, you know, is, is what they've pined for, what they're asking for. But the idea was, hey, it would be great, Jake Paul can take the $30 million, should he win, should he believe he wins, and walk away with that, right? Go off into the sunset. That's not what he's trying to do. He's, he's being you know, more business savvy about it. Mm. He's like, I can make a few million dollars for each guy I fight and a little bit more each time I do it. So if I get to 15, 20 fights before I have to take a loss and fight a real fighter and you know, they're calling for it, then he's probably made you know, a couple hundred million dollars versus 30. So, so you know, in the boxing world, you know, after a fight, they always ask the fighters, so who do you want to fight next? You know, um, which is a great question. And you know, everyone wants to hear, everyone wants to hear the call outs. At the end of the day, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, they're getting called out more than anybody in the game. That's, you know, because everyone wants to get paid, you know, even, 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 you know, in other sports and, and in bare knuckle, um, in bare knuckle boxing, you know, all these guys, they're like, they're like, I don't care how I fight as long as I make money, pay me. I'm a, I'm a prize fighter. Pay me money. You know, um, they want big names. They want big numbers. And, you know, at the end of the day, it don't matter what sport you fight, you, they want, they want to fight. And they're all calling out this guy, yeah. Jake Paul. But like you said, he's got he's got the money right now. He's the big ticket item. Just like uh, the boxers who want to fight in boxing, somewhere between super middleweight and light heavy, are all calling out Canelo Alvarez. Why? Well, they probably he, Canelo Alvarez probably can beat most of those guys that are calling him out. But they know that's their big payday ticket. You know, um, you got guys, even great champion fighters like Demetrius Andrade, who can't even get a fight with guys like that who deserve them. And, um, you know, he's not getting that big payday. Demetrius still has not had a great big payday. And it's unfortunate being an undefeated <laughs> former middleweight champion and now stepping up as a hot top contender at, at uh, super middle. God can't get a fight yeah. because people are afraid to fight him. They feel like, what's my upside here? If I beat him, people are like, meh. But if he beats me, I get knocked down a few pegs. And what's the point, right? So guys want to fight guys like Canelo for the money. They want to fight yeah. guys like Jake and Logan Paul for the money. Especially guys are calling out Jake and Logan Paul because they're like, these guys aren't boxers, so I want the money and the win on top of that. Yeah. But these are guys that it's not reciprocating back with Logan and, and Jake. They're not going to say, yeah, yeah, I'll fight you. They don't want to do that. Yeah. So, so you know, it, it makes you think about um, the, the celebrity boxing, um, which is a, another genre of fighting. Um, you know, we, so the, the last the last thing I saw for celebrity boxing was um, Snoop Dogg lookalike versus Logan Paul lookalike. <laughs> so, okay. So, and they're fighting, and these guys go around and they they get paid to show up at parties. You know, uh, you know Snoop Dogg's in the house, and the guy looks like him. Uh, you know, also Logan Paul, and you know they have um, a, a bunch of great. Great, uh, great fights. Check out uh, Celebrity Boxing as well, Damon Fellman. Um, so, yeah, we're at the uh, WBA 100th year. Yeah, we're, we're enjoying this event tremendously. Good, good. Uh, we're halfway through it. Um, we're, they're doing the rankings here. The room that we're in here right now is the WBA rankings. They've had a morning session already. They're trying to get some of these fighters uh, ranked a little higher. They've got an afternoon session beginning at 2 o'clock, which is in about an hour. And they'll be going into uh, the other weight classes, I believe, um, super welter and below. You want to come? You want to be here? So we're, uh, you know, we're we're looking forward to seeing the names being thrown around, who the rankings will be. And that that's a wrap.